focal point. We now talk about uh, the reactions to ambassadors in Zimandela's series of divisive, they're called divisive, uh, I don't know, the tweets about white people and land. She started off by tweeting, Dear apartheid apologists, your time is over. You will not rule again. We do not fear you. Finally, hashtag the land is ours. And this led to criticism from uh, a wide forum of people, many being of those being white South Africans on the social network Twitter. Uh, AfriForum being one of the organizations that formed that came forward. They're not only saying sit down with her and talk about these issues as the Nelson Mandela Foundation has been doing. They said that they've asked for a sit down meeting with her. About what? I don't know. Maybe we need to engage them. Uh, sometime tomorrow and find out why would you even want to call the ambassador up on these particular issues but uh, that's what they've done but AfriForum is saying fire her fire her she is a terrible representation for our country and she should not be spreading this message uh, to the international community uh, meantime kim heller a media and political strategist uh, wrote an article entitled it's an open letter almost so to speak entitled dear white south africans it is time to return the land and this also i mean got her a whole lot of uh, lambasting from uh, certain quarters of our community so we're going to have these two individuals joining us on the show today. The Deputy CEO of AfriForum, Ernst Roots, will be joining us just now. And after him, we'll be engaging Kim, Kim Heller, media and political strategist, about her open letter, Dear White South Africans, it is time to return the land. Let's get right into it. A very good afternoon to you, Mr. Roots. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome on to The Focal Point. Thank you very much. It's good to be on the show. Mr. Rutsa, let's talk about the issues that you have with the tweet by Ambassador Zinzi Mandela. Um, what is false in that particular tweet? Well, the problem with that tweet is it, it's extremely stereotypical. It speaks of an inherent attitude with this particular ambassador, where it's clear from what she's been saying, all the, uh, you know, explaining her tweets that this is a big racial issue for her. And our concern is that this isn't the type of statement that you want people who's officially abroad to represent South Africa to be making. But we had um, people who were officially abroad on behalf of your organization and organizations aligned to it, telling the international community that uh, white people were under attack in South Africa, that there was a genocide on white people going on. Oh, no. Was, oh, come was on. that not the same oh, message going out to the international community? I'm just asking. I'm just know, asking. Do you know just how many asking. Times journalists, can I answer your question? Please. Do you know how many times journalists have apologized to Afri Forum for saying that? Did you know that the press ombudsman has ruled that what you just did is a gross violation of the press code? Afri Forum has never said that. Why do you keep reporting that we said that? We did not say that. I did say Afri Forum and organizations aligned to it. We, okay, now tell me, which organizations aligned with Afri Forum have been traveling the world saying that there's a white genocide. Okay, let, let, let's move on from there because no, 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 I, I, no, no, I, no, I don't want to be get bogged don't down in that. My I don't want to get bogged down in that because that takes no, us away from the comments made us. by Zinzi no, Mandela. To me. You are misrepresenting us, and that's why on you're here. Radio station, and now I'm asking you to explain what's your source. I'm engaging you on this particular issue on a national you're radio station a and statement. giving you the the chance to respond. That it's as simple as that. I'm, I'm responding by asking you, what's your thoughts? Mr. Ruiz, we know that there are organizations aligned to AfriForum that have been Which going one? around the world saying that there is a genocide in South Africa. There are even um, social websites that have been set up to spread this message. Uh, which, which organizations aligned with So Afri- are you saying you've never heard this? This is absolutely not true. AfriForum is not a part of this, of this message going out yes, to the international I'm, that's community. That's what I'm saying, and that's what that's the, all, the, the that's, that's, that's all you needed to say. Well. That's all you needed to say. No, no, I no, hear you. Listen. But, but we, have a, we have a serious problem in this country with journalists on mainstream radio state, stations and TV networks making claims about organizations that is false. And that exactly was, there's this narrative in South Africa that Afri Forum has been traveling the world saying that there's a white genocide. We've never said that. The only reason why there is such a narrative is because journalists keep repeating this mantra without any evidence. So I'm asking you, please tell me what is your evidence. 
I am talking about the white genocide conspiracy theory that's come out. I'm talking about uh, the various, uh, I'm looking for the different organizations that form this part of this white genocide. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for it. Um, and, and I do remember, but no, it's not just Afri Forum. And that's why I said organizations aligned to it. Which organizations? Okay, I'll give you that response in a short while. But just before we... Okay, okay, while I'm looking for that response, please answer me on this particular one. What in the tweet that Zinzi Mandela said was false? Again, I go back to that question. What was false in her tweet? It's not about about making a factual statement. It's about making an accusation. She's talking about... I don't know who she's referring to when she's saying you apartheid denialist. It seems like she's talking about white people who are disagreeing with, with the ANC. Uh, so it's not about what is factual or what's not factual. It's about the narrative that is being perpetuated by that tweet. And it's about making such a statement as a representative of South Africa. And uh, when we look at her experiences, this has been brought up, I'm sure you've heard this before, experiences not only of Zinzi Mandela, but of South Africans today around the race issue. Would you say that we don't have a race problem in South Africa? We, we do have a race problem in South Africa, but the race problem is you can look at repeated opinion surveys by many organizations. The, the race problem is quite, quite small if you compare it to, for example, the crime problem or the education crisis or the political leadership problem. So racism is a problem, and yes, there is such a thing as black pain, and people have lived experiences, and it's something that we need to acknowledge and we need to deal with. But the problem is when we meet, make crazy statements such as these by, by the ambassador, the, whole, the point of the, the sympathy that, that we are supposed to be getting is, is downplayed. Why? Because there are organizations and there are people who cling to this and say, oh, so this is, this is the people who say that there's such a thing as black pain, for example. This is how they express themselves. And of course, this is not, this is not true. This is a literal presentation. And that is why we're saying that the ambassador should be called to order, because what she's saying is not representative of what we experience in South Africa when we talk to black people, for example. And uh, with regards to apartheid and uh, what took place during apartheid, the, the apartheid denialist uh, statement, do you think that this is untrue, especially considering how other countries who have for- faced this form of discrimination have dealt with it? Um, did we deal sufficiently with it in South Africa in order to say, let's move on? Well, it's that's like asking, have we dealt sufficiently with, uh, has the world dealt sufficiently with World War II, for example? Um, I don't think there's anything that we can do now or within five years or ten years after which we will say, okay, so we've dealt sufficiently with our past, we can move on. I don't think that's the overall issue yet. I think we, we need to deal with our history and we need to deal with it comprehensively. We also need to deal with it on a factual basis, um, and that is very important, but but. The narrative currently is is not helpful because it seems like the further we move away from 1994, the more we are reminded that we, or the more we are forced to talk about the past. And yes, we don't have a problem with talking about the past, and we should do so. But the problem is when talking about the past becomes an excuse for government facing their own failures. I think that's the problem that we currently are in. Every time there's a problem with 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 government failing to, to deliver on what they've promised to deliver, we are suddenly forced to talk about the past. So it's become a convenient excuse not to face realities that we're supposed to be facing. I'm looking at an article. You asked me who is uh, affiliated to you or which organizations affiliated to Afri Forum um, have been uh, going around um, internationally saying that there is a crisis in South Africa. I'm looking at a BBC article um, that talks about... Uh, the president of the U.S., Donald Trump, tweeting um, that he is very concerned uh, about what is happening in South Africa and saying mm-hmm. that um, he is going to, to be looking at the um, farm killings and the uh, farm occupations um, that have been taking place in South Africa. And a tweet from Kali Krill, who is a member of AfriForum, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Kali Krill tweeting, Great turn of events with a bit of luck at Ernst Roots and I met John Robert Bolton, USA National Security Advisor to at real Donald Trump. We also gave him a copy of Ernst's new Kill the Boer book on farm murders and expropriation without compensation in South Africa. Afri Forum 
USA hashtag. This was in 2018 on May the 9th. Yes, but that's not a source to your claim. Your claim is that African no, that Forum is. organizations aligned with African Forum have been saying there's a white genocide. You met with uh, the, uh, um, uh, the Na- USA National Security Advisor to, to Donald mm-hmm. Trump and said that there were Boers being killed and farm murders and expropriation without compensation was already taking place in South Africa. No, we didn't say that. We said that farm murders is a big problem in South Africa and we said that there's a threat of expropriation without compensation. That's not the same as saying there's a white genocide. It's, it's exactly the same, Dutch, especially considering how it's perceived. You said it's what? not an issue of what is factual and what is not factual. We're talking here about perceptions. You are concerned about the, the ambassador's uh, perceptions that she's sending out to the international world. You don't think that this statement is, is perpetuating those particular perceptions? Oh, my goodness. I'm just are asking. I'm just asking. You asked okay. me to go back there. You asked me for, the, for, for evidence. Yes. I've given you the evidence, yes. sir. And you've not given me any sources saying that we... Kali Krill has a tweet right here. Kali Krill, your organization's Kali leader. Did say there's a white genocide? Read me that tweet. Uh, read no. it again. Okay. And, and read me which part, which part in that tweet does he say there's a white genocide? This Are is not saying? meant to be both sides of the story between you and me, Mr. Roots. Uh, so let's give the other side but of the story a chance to speak. Because honestly speaking, I think you're being confrontational over something that you know is a fact over one technical point. You know that this perception is all over the world. Donald Trump tweeted that there was a white genocide in South Africa after you guys had met with his advisor. Donald Trump did not tweet that there's a white okay. genocide. Let's move on to Kim Heller. Mr. Roots, please stay on the line. I will request that you stay on the line if, if you'd like to respond to some of the comments that uh, Ms. Heller will make uh, I'm, because I'm going to give her a chance to comment on some of the comments that you've made with regards to why you have a problem with the uh, uh, Twitter, uh, uh, Twitter, the tweets of Ambassador Zinzi Mandela.